So, welcome to the part 2 of uh, Fourier series. In this ninth week, we had started with studying Fourier representation of arbitrary functions. So, the idea here, let me repeat it, the idea here is that uh, given an arbitrary function, we allow for it to have finite number of finite discontinuities that can be handled. Something like for instance, this function. So, you could say that it is periodic with this being the periodicity. So, in such cases what we wanted to do is to write these functions in terms of sin and cosines. So, given that f of x is arbitrary and periodic function, we calculate these coefficients a m s, b m s, a 0 by 2 and so on and finally, assemble them together in a formula of this type. So, f of x now can be written as a 0 by 2 plus I have an infinite summation. So, that would be a m cos m x plus b m sin m x. The summation over all integer values of m. The physical interpretation that you can draw from this is that you could say that my periodic function has these following frequencies which uh, with which it is made up of. So, typically if you look at say time series of many weather variables, you will see that there is an annual component, there is a seasonal component which would correspond to the kind of annual and seasonal variations that we can immediately recognize. Today what we are going to do is to look at how we can liberate ourselves from the necessity of having the function to be perfectly periodic. Let us say that I am looking at a function which is not quite uh, periodic, but something like this. So, it is explicitly not periodic, but I am not worried because I want the representation of this function between 0 and L by 2. In the range between 0 and L by 2, this function which I will call as f e of x to indicate that I am trying to approximate f of x by an even function which I will call f e of x. So, in the desired range which is between 0 and L by 2, it quite nicely matches f of x. And we can also do this with an odd function. Let me show how that uh, works. Now, if I match with the odd function, which I will call f o of x to indicate that I am using an odd function. So, in that case, again what you will see is that in the desired range between 0 and L by 2, the odd function which I have chosen f o of x will nicely match my function f of x. Now, let us write a Fourier series. We have all the uh, formulas written down. So, the results are not going to be too different from what we have already calculated. If I am using the even function to approximate f of x, then without doing any further work from what we already studied in the previous module, I can directly write down the Fourier expansion or the Fourier series for an even function. And we know that for even function, the Fourier expansion uh, terms will all be made up of cosine functions. But still, I have to determine this a n. And for that, we just go back to what we studied earlier. So, we will use this. You should note one thing about this expression a m. So, the limit of this integral goes from 0 to 2 pi and here we are dividing by 1 by pi. So, it is if your interval is 0 to 2 pi, the basic periodicity of your function f of x, then you would divide by half of that period. So, I have this first expression which is simply based on uh, the expression that we obtained in the last class. Split this integral into two parts, one that goes from minus L by 2 to 0 and other goes from 0 to L by 2. So, now 
I have split the integral into uh, two parts. Now, if you compare this with what we have here, that is in fact exactly this second integral. This whole expression is just 2 times the second integral. So, now I can write the final uh, expression in the following way. And in the region between 0 to L by 2, f e of x is same as f of x. So, I can replace f e of x by f of x. So, here I have an expression for the a n's. So, now let us look at the other case. When the odd function f o of x matches your desired function in the range between 0 and L by 2. f of x can be written as expression again taken from what we did earlier on in the last module. So, it is simply an implementation of this. You are integrating from 0 to 2 pi. So, in this case it had the physical meaning of a periodicity, the basic period which was 2 pi and uh, the quantity that you divide here is half of that. Again as usual we will split this into two integrals. Again you go back and look at what you have here, you will notice that that is exactly this term. So, B n will simply be 4 by L integral of 0 to L by 2 and f o of x which is the odd function that I am trying to approximate for my f of x, they are expected to coincide quite nicely within 0 to L by 2. So, I can replace the odd function by f of x. So, this finally gives me the desired expression for B n and we should keep in mind that the f of x that we are going to get by this procedure will precisely match the function only in the range between 0 and L by 2. Outside of this range it is not going to match, but then we did not even demand it. So, let us see how it all works by actually doing one problem. So, this is my function. So, between 0 and pi by 2 it is a straight line like this and between pi by 2 to pi it is pi minus x. So, at x equal to pi by 2 f of x is pi by 2 which is this point itself and at x equal to pi it gives you a 0 which means it comes here. So, I should be getting a line like this. This is the function and we do not know how it behaves outside of this. And now we want to find out the, the Fourier series for uh, such a function. Unlike in earlier cases where you are told that this repeats itself, we do not know if it repeats itself and we really are not worried about it. So, let us say that we will use the odd function to approximate it. So, we can do either way. I mean you can make a choice at this point. You can say that I will use an odd function or an even function, but let me say that I will use an odd function. Let us write the expression for B n. So, remember that our x runs from 0 to pi. So, we should take half of that and divide it here. 1 divided by half of that would be pi by 2. So, this is my expression for uh, B n. So, you can see that B is dependent on n and n comes from this sin n x here and of course, we need to do the integral and uh, simplify this u equal to x d u equal to d x in that case and d v will be sin n x d x and v is integral over sin n x which is cos n x divided by n. Now, to do the partial uh, integral, if I call 
my desired integral as i which means that I would call this as i. In that case i is equal to u v evaluated between the limits 0 and pi by 2 minus integral v d u evaluated between 0 and pi by 2. And finally, when you do everything and assemble, I will directly write the result for uh, b n leaving this as an exercise for you to just complete the steps. Now, I can assemble and write the final result. n is a even number in that case uh, sin n pi by 2 is equal to 0, which means that only the odd terms of this series would survive. Substitute the values for b 1, b 2, b 3 and so on. So, b 1 would be 4 by pi and sin pi by 2 is 1. So, that is going to just give me sin x and in fact, you see this 1 by n square term here. So, which means that 4 by pi is a constant that I can actually take outside. So, the first term is sin x as usual and second term would be of course, 4 by pi which has already been taken outside that is going to generate a 9 in the denominator and sin 3 pi by 2 which will be minus 1. So, I need to change this plus 2 minus and I am going to be left with sin 3 x. And since it is sin 3 x, it is instructive to write this as 3 square. It makes it nicer and you can even write a compact formula later. And now, it is very easy to write the next term. So, that would be sin 5 x by 5 square minus sin 7 x by 7 square and so on. This result that I have for f of x is a Fourier series for my function which lies between 0 and pi. So, if you take into account all the terms of the series, there are infinity of them, it will exactly reproduce for you this function here. A general term would be sin n x by n square. So, which means the numerator which is some sin n x is al always an oscillatory function and that is always going to lie between plus 1 and minus 1, whereas the denominator is increasing as square of some integer. So, clearly the weights of successive terms are decreasing. So, effectively it would mean that maybe first few terms would be able to do a good job of reproducing this function uh, for our purposes. Now, you go back to the definition of a function f of x. It tells me that if x is pi by 2, then f of x is pi by 2 as well. So, at x equal to pi by 2, f of x is pi by 2. So, now we can put this in this uh, relation that we have uh, just obtained. Let us do that. Uh, so, it tells me that left hand side f of x is pi by 2 and that is equal to 4 by pi. First term is sin x. So, that will be sin pi by 2 minus sin 3 x that is 3 pi by 2 divided by 3 square plus sin 5 pi by 2 by phi square and so on. So, this can be now simplified and we can write a nice series. So, this would be pi square by 8 that is equal to 1 plus 1 by 3 square plus 1 by phi square plus and so on. So, what we have is an infinite series for pi. So, in principle you can calculate the value of pi by just summing this uh, series to any accuracy and precision.
Now finally, before I close, let us look at pictorially what we have done. This is the function that we wanted to write a Fourier series for and we do have this uh, result and if you sum everything, you should of course be able to approximate this function precisely like this. It would match between 0 and pi which is our desired range. But now, if you ask what would happen between minus pi and 0, you could actually make a guess, make an informed guess because we used the odd series to represent the function. So, which means that outside of this range between 0 and pi, the function would behave like an odd function. The function would uh, continue to be like this in the range when x lies between when x lies between minus pi and 0